There it is. And transcripts somewhere. <laughs> All right, everybody. So the minutes are in the chat. If you could click on those and add yourself and maybe tell us something that's on your current grocery list. Uh, so welcome to the July 27th Chaos DEI uh, worker meeting. Um, I'm going to facilitate this week. Could we first thing could we find a facilitator for next week? anybody like to facilitate for next week i'm not going to be here so i would do it but <laughs> i'm gone i'm willing <clears throat> but i'd certainly welcome anyone else that wants to take it oh precious says she could do it in chat wonderful Thanks, thank you precious, precious. All right. So precious, sometimes the hardest part is is figuring out what to put here. <laughs> like the question to ask people. That's all. <laughs> that is consistently the hardest part for me. Just so you know. Uh, all right. So I would just like to say um, the first thing on our agenda is the review of released metrics. So for this round, we've been asking working groups to go into uh, this document, our spreadsheet, and take a look at the green rows that we have. So for example, common and evolution and risk. So the green rows represent metrics that have been released from the particular working group. In this round, this, this six months, we're really focusing on trying to um, trying to just review some of those old metrics uh, because sometimes the metrics templates are out of date or sometimes you just look at the things that were written six months ago or a year ago and it makes no sense today. <laughs> so sen sentences just need to be rewritten. <laughs> uh, so uh, thanks to what on Earth did I mean Precious, uh, who are both on the call. Um, so as you can see here, they spent a lot of time going through and reviewing the old metrics and links are provided here to the old metrics or I'm sorry, links are provided here to the the review that both Precious and Oma and myself had done uh, as well. So if you take a look here, um, this is a link to all of the proposed changes or kind of the proposed new updates. Precious or Oma, did you have any comments on on the work that you had done over the last week? So if, if you do, you can speak up or just put it in the chat. That's not a problem there. Um, so did they, were they extensive changes, I guess, is the biggest question for us. And so a lot of the review, like if it's just changing the narrative of a sentence, you know what I mean? Or it's like removing a point, like it doesn't really, that's not a huge change for anybody, but so Precious or Oma, for any of the metrics, were there substantial changes that maybe we should be aware of to the metrics? And if so, maybe you could just mark them maybe in this document or put it in the chat. I would say that small changes that increase clarity or correct grammar or spelling and things like that, those would not be, I would say those are not significant changes. I think, I think if there's changes required to, that, that maybe clarify but also somewhat alter what the metric is or require completely rewritten paragraphs or the deletion of paragraphs in addition to other paragraphs or sentences like somewhere in between those two boundaries is where it becomes significant if that's a helpful guide in my opinion 
and I, I think that is helpful. And the reason that um, that I'm asking is because really the any minor change that Sean was kind of referring to, like an update of a sentence or I don't know a small inclusion of a point for clarity. Um, any of those really don't changes. I highlighted new changes I added in the doc. Okay, so Oma highlighted changes in the doc. Um, any of those don't really need to go back out for community review. We can just issue an update, you know what I mean, to the metric, and it'll just be incorporated in the next release of the metric. But anything that requires probably a more significant review or that was a major change, we really do need to put it under community review where we get kind of another set of people to take a look at it. Yeah, we could definitely take a look. Um, so we could take a look at some of OMAs, for example. So let's see, Project Burnout was one. Yeah, I just think if we looked really quick, it would. Yeah. We could say, oh, yeah, that's minor. <laughs> yeah. I think this would definitely qualify as a minor revision. I think that question adds clarity. I think it's a it's probably a better question than how do you feel about working on this project actually this metric does not have a contributor section in it should we add that uh, uh, yep. probably yep i mean since we're here anyway yeah Okay, I can type that in. Yes, this, this is a really good example, I think, of a minor minor change that does not require a re-review process. Oh, Oma, can you give me edit privileges on this? Looks like I don't have edit privileges. Like you can only add it as a suggestion. I couldn't even do yeah. that. It was weird. I can see what I mean. Oh no, there is. I'm sorry. Yeah, I said it's showing. It's showing up for me. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Screen. I just can't. I can't click my own. Can't accept it. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So the 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 question is here, like, to add this question. Is that right, Oma? When you have that highlighted. Okay, great. Okay, so maybe um, let's see. Maybe a, a next step would be to could we have somebody just kind of take a look at these metrics that just kind of a second second look from Oma and Precious. I'm trying to think of like what the best order of events is here. You know what I mean? So like, if we wanna put this in a PR, we have to like do little things like get it into Markdown. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's not much at all. I can take that as an action item to just like make them submit them in a PR is that what you're yeah and kind of like um like just make like just make sure we have the tags for markdown you know what I yeah. mean 
Um, yeah, I can do that. I have that uh, plugin that helps too. So yeah, okay. I can do that. And it's not even like rereading the metric because I totally accept like what Precious and Oma have done. It's just kind of the final touches for the PR. Okay, cool. Thank you, Elizabeth. That's a lot. It's all of these. Okay, I don't think it will take very long. I think it's okay. okay. So, okay, so. Um, I mean, unless Oma and Precious want to do that to get like that green square on their GitHub <laughs> account. Yeah, right. Take that away. I don't even know what the green square is. On the that, contribution that big graph. The contribution thing. The big oh, rectangle oh, oh. full of dots, like square dots. Okay. Dot. Is this dot? Oh, yeah. dot right. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah. Precious is like, yeah, what's the green square? <laughs> it's just on your GitHub profile. It shows a like a graph of your activity and your contributions. And so some people like really take pride in, you know, having as many of those little green squares as possible. Other people do not care at all. So I am one that does not care at all. But some people like to track yeah, these and have like proof of, you know, that they're contributing. GitHub used to say you've contributed like 12 consecutive days, way to go, you're on a roll. But I think they realize that might not be altogether encouraging healthy behavior. So they've stopped providing that feedback. Okay, Precious. Um, so what I'll do then is I will get all of the docs ready for the markdown. And then <clears throat> you have to be the one to submit the PR though, in order to get that contribution thing, I think. Or maybe you could, I don't know if you can merge it in. If you have that permission to do that. Okay, we can we can we sort can it add, out. We can give her those permissions. The only the other thing to think about on the PR is um like what's the easiest way to issue the PR so that the translations repo, the translations folks can see the change. Because like if we just delete the markdown and just overwrite it. With a new mark down the whole yeah. thing, the diff. Well, I think like the the original doc is still out there in the folders, so they'll be able to see. Here was the original one that was published on the site, and here is the new one that we're proposing. So they can use that diff report. Replace those lights, though. You know. Yeah, I I think it can be a diff. What, yeah. yeah, I think Matt, Matt's right though. What if if for example the if you copy and paste a whole new thing, it might some, it just depends on how perfectly aligned all of the spacing is where it's exactly the same. And if it's not aligned, it'll just show like the whole thing being replaced and it is hard to read. So I don't have a, I don't have a quick answer for that. Yeah. I it's, see what you're saying. Yeah. But like if precious knows, for example, that all she did was add that one question going directly into the markdown. If, if, the, if that's the only change, and I think it is based on what I've heard, then just go in and add that question to the existing markdown um, and you're done. And you, and you have something the translations repo can see. Whereas if you do a full copy, paste, replace, you might not. You could try one and experiment, I guess. I got you. So maybe we, okay. Yeah, we could just play around with that a little bit. I just don't want to drop like whole, <laughs> like thanks yeah. for all the prior <laughs> of all of these could you do them all again we added yeah. some here and there <laughs> yeah that doesn't seem yeah, very it's... thoughtful okay yeah i'll sort it out sorry for the noise i'll sort it out oh that's fine okay so then issue the pr pr ish elizabeth precious Emma. I'm trying to trying to like minimize the you, you get what I'm saying here. All right. Yeah, 100%. Then, okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. I just said 100%. Yeah. Gotcha. 
And then it seems like most of the changes are minor. So then once the PRs are issued, then they can just be accepted. You know what I mean? Yeah, the mark changes. And then once the PRs are merged, so once like all of these are in as changed, we'll go ahead and mark them in here. Oops. And then we'll issue one issue to the translations repo, which is like from the DEI working group, these are the metrics that have been updated and it would just list all of the metrics. As opposed to whatever, 10 or you know, 15 issues, one for each metric. I have it right here. <laughs> Whoever's typing. <laughs> it's not me anymore typing. Okay. Okay. I'm the culprit. It was me. <laughs> I cannot read a down. I'm like right here. Okay. And so then this, this process, I think is what seems to be the least amount of overhead for other working groups. If you recall, we had an original process, which was one person was assigned a metric. That person would go through the metric and propose changes. Do you remember this? And then the working group would pick up those changes. You know what I mean? So like, for example, um, I had done, I had gone and taken a look at family friendliness. So this is different than what we're doing now. I had taken a look at family friendliness and then like said, these are the things that require attention. And I, I didn't make any changes. And then Sean, like you actually went in do you remember? And fix <laughs> that. Yep. Yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. So it was like a two a month or a year ago. Process. Yeah. It wasn't a year ago. June 8th. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, I think that process is too bulky, to be honest with you. It, it yeah. Feels it's like a lot it, of steps. It's a lot of steps. So I think, like, for evolution, kind of like what we're doing with Common, Sean. Yeah. Like we just have people just go, just go make changes. Just people go make changes. Yep. Like what Oma and Precious have done <clears throat> with DEI. Yep. You know what I mean? Just go make changes. We'll bring them to the group and then we'll just issue PRs from there. I think this whole, the tracking that, that I was trying to do with issues was too cumbersome. I don't know if people think of that. Yeah, my only question is if, uh, we will still need to make sure that they fit the quality things for the metrics release so that it doesn't stop that metrics release process if we've missed a step there. That would be my only question. You know I what I'm saying? If yeah, if it, I think if it's a minor release, if we, or I'm sorry, a minor change, if we just issue the PR, that'll just be picked up. Like there's really not a quality okay. checklist that needs to be done. I think if we do have a major change, then we probably want to put it through like a whole <laughs> we're revising this metric yeah because if we're adding like an image or like something yeah something big then we just want to make sure it doesn't break the metrics release yeah so maybe as soon as as soon as one of the working groups has what they would consider to be a major change to a metric then we'll just we'll figure that we'll go back to this process for major changes but minor changes i think can just be prs and then as long as it doesn't change the file name, like it, it'll be picked up in the next release. Oh, and the other thing to add, Elizabeth, just when you're while continue. you're in there, <laughs> and then um, date of last review or whatever we call it. Yeah, I, I for, kind of forget what it is. I'll get it in there, but it's the date. It's, it's July twenty seventh. But I kind of forget what. <laughs> I kind of forget what I, what we put for that. If it's a data box, <coughs> yeah, or, I do too. Yeah, and we like italicize it and format it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Got you. Okay. Does this make sense? I hopefully I'm not confusing the issue here. 
this this makes sense. I mean, I, I can follow it. It's basically the key thing is we're going to create one issue for all of them. Is that right? In the translations repo. So each right okay. each of these, assuming each of these has a minor change, there's just going to yep. be one PR that's issued. The PR will be merged, and then that it's kind of done. Mm -hmm. So it looks like though some of these were already had issues open in that yeah because i was kind of following that model right so can we just close those issues then i, since I think so let's just close them okay yep i was thinking the same i didn't want to just close them before i just right them. okay and so because these are all minor they just get a pr you know and the pr does the tracking for us like we don't need an issue to do that tracking. So the PR does the tracking. We can update it in here, like date of last review. You know what I mean? Just put today's date in there. That'll track that. Um, and then if it's a major change, so pretending that project burnout was a major change, then we'd still issue a PR. You know what I mean? <laughs> As a proposed change. But then I think this is when we open up a new issue and say, we had some quality. We have some things we have to check here. Yep. It's basically it's like major we're creating a like an issue. Yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? OK. Sorry for confusing things. I think we, I just made it more complex than it needed to be at the beginning. <laughs> No, it, it took a lot of, I mean, there's a lot around the process. It, I don't think I would have fully understood it if you hadn't gone through it, honestly. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, we didn't, we didn't know until we did it. So now we've done it. Exactly. And, and it just seems so much easier when we're like, are there any volunteers to review the metrics? And people would volunteer and it was awesome. And now we have them all reviewed by a, a community member. And that's great. So, okay. All right, cool. Um, if you have any questions, just, just put it in the just put put it in like Slack or something like that. Um, I did have, let's see, maybe just I'll skip on these two for just a second. Um, we we just we need to do this, so <laughs> we need to take a look at ChaosCon Europe and how we are doing as a conference against our badging criteria. You know what I mean? Like, so really think about how, before we submit an application yeah. and think about how we're doing, yeah. ways that we could improve ChaosCon. And then there are... Do we need to make sure that uh, the ChaosCon badging review is conducted by somebody who isn't principally homed in the chaos project in other words yeah it's like a little weird badging ourselves so i had suggested the audit team members they're familiar with yes the, yep. the event badging and um so at least two of them yeah that, that seems an good. excellent suggestion chris christy has already been trained on badging so she yeah. would be great um, and then the second one, we can just maybe go over. I can have a one-on-one -on -one, okay. uh, with somebody to train them on like just what it all is and how to do it. Okay, that'd be great. Um, and so maybe I, from my perspective, it's a couple step process. One, we should probably take a look at what we are saying on our webpage. You know what I mean? Like the things that we know are gonna be reviewed in the, in the badging. Um, there are things that we probably wanna find out so for example, on September 12th, which is the day of ChaosCon, do we have access, like are there um, uh, like family-friendly facilities available at the venue? That's the day before OSS EU. And like, is that something that is available that day? I have no idea. And if it is, we should probably promote it. <laughs> but this is, this is a service that's available, so. So there's probably a little bit of work that needs to be done before we actually make a submission. 
and then somebody will have to make the submission and then we have to have that submission reviewed. So would anybody want to take a look at how we align with the badging parts, like how we think we might do? You know what I mean? Like kind of a, a pre a pre evaluation by ourselves, which, which I, I do see, as yeah. an event. So let's just talk. Yeah, let's talk through the criteria. I see what you're saying. Yeah, talk through the criteria and see where we sit. Yeah, because um, if there's anything that we need to address, like right now, I can tell you we do not provide diversity access tickets. <clears throat> but the Linux Foundation we could scholarship support, and so do we because we're an LF project. Like, how do we? How do we present that? So, so yes. Would I think the, the scholarships. Yeah, go ahead, John. Does the, I, I would think the Linux Foundation would allow us to uh, grant for diversity access tickets that it would be as simple as us asking them to uh, give us a code that we can give to people who get diversity access tickets. But I, I also think the scholarship's important because many people on this call wouldn't be able to travel without the scholarship support. Mm -hmm. So we, pr we might want to make like a, maybe even on our site, like a map of that, like how you would go about attending chaos con if you needed support. Yeah, I agree. We don't have an, I don't think we have anything about that right now. Well, I don't, so I don't be a really, that's a really, yeah. So like step one would be to apply for scholarship dollars from the LF. And I would probably need to confirm that if those, I don't, does the, do the scholarships pay you money, you know, or do they just like waive fees? Fanad's the only person I know that's gotten one. And my understanding is they paid his travel costs yeah, to some them, like money significant extent plane tickets and stuff like that yeah that's my recollection as well okay um, <clears throat> do uh okay and then the other would be is that we don't provide travel support but we provide like tickets you know what I mean? Like a diversity access ticket to OSS EU at a large level, and then chaos con at a smaller level. Okay. Ruth said it's a reimbursement for flight and hotel. Do people, what do people, <laughs> I'm just trying thinking out loud here. Do people have. Awesome. I think maybe we need a little clarification from the LF on a few points. Okay. So maybe so scholarships, like kind of what they what they are. And child. Care. I was just. Yeah. I was just looking on the website repo, and I think we might actually uh, benefit from just asking Kevin quick which of the overwhelming number of markdown documents at that link is where the because you know attending information shows up because I don't actually know where to start editing to add that material. <clears throat> okay. I would suspect that I can get um, codes for chaos con because I was able to get codes for speakers for chaos con. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the summit, that's going to be a LF code. <clears throat> Is anybody registered for OSX? I actually, I actually have it. I actually haven't yet. I haven't either. Like, I'm wondering if you can, okay, I'll, there are, it seems like there are a few things I need to clarify from the LF. All right. Um, that we can, we can put on our site for support. Um, Ruth put this for travel funding for OSF.
USS EU? Yeah, I just want to like update y'all that my travel funding request was approved. So yay. It did? Yay! <laughs> yeah, so I'll be doing this application next. And okay, so what do they, they approve? Like airfare? Yeah, so yeah, I, I did like e math um, with like with um, I uploaded like the cost of travel and um accommodation at the time, which was around uh fifteen hundred. Okay. They did approve fifteen hundred. And do they did they waive registration? Yeah. So I'm a speaker. So um yeah, I did. I'm one of the speakers. So anyway, okay. The code was given. So. Yeah, I, I do not know about for travel funding if they waive like for people that are attendees that apply as attendees. So I do not know about that. Okay. Okay. And did you register for have you registered for the conference, Ruth? No, I did the registration like since but yeah, I, I haven't registered for ChaosCon directly. I think it should ChaosCon then, but Cards here in Nigeria, I mess. Can do more than the limit of twenty dollars, so I have to do it maybe when I come for the conference or something. Okay, so you have registered for OSS EU. Yeah, but not not Chaos Con. Yep. Okay. Um, I mean, what do people think about like a uh, a request site for diversity access tickets? For chaos con <coughs> just like independent of <laughs> the lf registration because like it would i mean we certainly we've done it before yeah we've just let people in informally and so i don't see i don't have a problem with that yeah ruth okay yeah the, the thing we're having like um diversity like forms for people to i i think before you can assess um Chaos Con, you need to um, have um, registered for OSS EU, right? I think that's correct. It's all part of the same registration process. Yeah, so I, I think we have to work with LF if we want to do that as well, because maybe they could, I think someone said like a code for people to assess like the main, mm -hmm. maybe they could provide something like that. But we you know currently that the applications are closed for like sponsorship. Um, on their page, so I don't know. We're an LF project, so they should they should do something. Yeah, and they're they're super helpful. The events team is amazing in terms of trying to help us through this. So maybe I should just set up a call with them to get some clarity on this because I I even think like I don't I think it would be hard for somebody to show up to Dublin and only go to Chaos Con and not OSS EU because it's in the OSS EU venue and they have people checking badges you know so I don't think you could walk into the venue and just go to chaos con without being registered for OSS EU that seems like my experience from prior conferences but I can ask okay all right, um, I'll get some clarity on this. This one's remarkably complicated. I, it's interesting. Okay. Um, so let's see, I was gonna ask um, the newcomer experiences with the chaos project, how things are, how things seem to be going. I know Elizabeth, you were away a little bit, but I know you kind of lead a lot of that. Um, yeah, Ruth, do you have a comment? Yeah, things, things have been well, like it's been going pretty great because um, for my end, I know like there are some newcomers um, that we've seen like um, contributions lately. Um, they've been bringing up contributions that they've been making efforts um, aside, you know, the newcomers call and, you know, current um, reach outs um, people do to me on DM and I explain and even within Chaos Africa as well, things have been going well. Um, I think what I want to see even leads into the next topic, but I'll just hold that on. But 
things have been going well. And something I wanted to point out is um, we could, we are doing a lot of um, projects here in Chaos, like a lot of websites are redesigned. So we can't really measure this right now. Um, you know, the handbook is being um, worked on currently. So I, I don't think we can measure their uh, newcomer experience, but I would say it's going well because yeah, I've been seeing people um, start contributing. Yeah, I, I think it's personally, I think it's going real well too. I've seen a lot of newcomers participating consistently in our meetings over the last like three weeks, four weeks. So it's been amazing. Um, Sean, how are things going? I know you've been running some auger sessions, haven't you? You're muted, Sean. I haven't I haven't had uh, participation yet, but I haven't actively promoted it very heavily either. So I'm going to start to actively promote it very heavily. And uh, maybe I'll get Elizabeth's help with that. I think, uh, okay. All we need to do is like a little bit of a, I'm like, a, I think the next one is um, a week from Saturday. So perhaps we can uh, do a Twitter push or something like we've done before. I could have done that while Elizabeth was out, but I did not. So I think the the need to promote is there and I have not done that, but yeah. Okay. Have you, have you talked with folks like it? Um, Oh, Ruth just said she can help promote in Chaos Africa as well, Sean. Awesome. Awesome. Um, you that you do those really early in the morning your time, don't you? So it would Yeah, they're like seven to ten in the morning US. Yeah. So, they, I try to make it like I, I can't make it fit every time zone, but I, I basically try to make it fit Africa, Europe, India, okay. um, and the US. Okay. Um, okay, that'd be great. Um, yeah, um, <clears throat> I think I, I think it's um it's the right time to ask. Um, <clears throat> there is a money event I see on the calendar which I always want to attend, but um, I think it's by Sean, um, the one that um has agar related projects something something. Um, yeah, for more lab. Um, no, 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 agar. Auger, okay. But I'm not sure um, because every time I've ever, I think it's thrice now, I've tried to check in, but um, they always tell me the host has not yet started the meeting. So it looks like um, it doesn't happen. Oh, so Sean, okay. you, there are, there so, are. Uh, now I'm wondering if, now I'm wondering if, I'm wondering if I'm doing something wrong with the meeting then, because nobody's been showing up and I've been a little perplexed by that. But I wonder yeah, if I think, there's some some kind of issue with how I'm logging in or the link I'm using. Yeah, maybe it's the link because I know the first one I tried showing up, but it said the same um, host does not stay the meeting. Maybe you want to double check the link. Yeah, you know what I'll what I'll what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a scheduled recurring meeting in Zoom and use that link. That that should be more stable. Because I've had I've had not the widespread issue because the, these are all newcomers, so I guess it's more widespread. But we've I've definitely had issues with people ending up in the wrong room because some of our links in the meetings are outdated. So not that meeting, but other meetings. So I've I've had the that happened before, and obviously I'm I thought I was doing it right, but I'll just create a link for every meeting. Yeah, I, I have had an issue where I, sh I was in another meeting for the newcomers um, office hours and I was there like 10 minutes before I found the correct link. I remember that. <laughs> okay. All right, also, so I, I have to... Sorry, Sean, don't go ahead. I have to, I have to okay, so I have to, I'm going to fix that game first. Uh, and then maybe I'll also create a link to the Slack channel in the meeting invite so that if people are having trouble, they can Slack message to a particular specific place. Okay. So otherwise I won't know. Are you going to update people are having trouble? And you're updating it. Yeah, I'm going to. Calendar too? So yeah, so what I'm going to do is after this meeting, so I don't like,
log out the host, okay. I'll log into the chaos zoom and create a create a zoom scheduled meeting okay. that will have a specific link for, for that meeting. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Well, glad we brought this up. Yeah, no, thank you. All right, cool. Um, Ruth, did you have a comment on chaos Africa? You said you were kind of holding off on a comment, but maybe you. Yeah. Um, so, um, since how things are going in chaos Africa, we're, we're at the onboarding phase where like, I'm trying to kind of like onboard, um, the contributors that have shown, um, you know, that have been showing up in meetings. I've been trying to onboard them to help them kind of like understand what we do at chaos. Um, my, my plan for this is that um, after I, you know, getting them up to speed, they could also help with onboarding or that. So it's like a chain, you know, they help. Um, I do um, some onboarding and then three people onboard six, just like a chain to help people kind of like understand. Um, also, um, I've been making some plans for a Twitter space, kind of like um, an informal kind of, um, events um, on Twitter to kind of bring people that have uh, been doing open source in Africa for quite a long time to talk about like challenges. Uh, I'm going to share deets when we have everything settled up, but I have like three speakers confirmed already. So I'm definitely going to share that um, to kind of um, people could join in as well through Twitter. So looking at in an event to learn more about the challenges that they have seen since they've been in the space for like five years and some 10 years to, to kind of learn from what they know and how they would solve it or solutions that they have so we can pick up from there. I have also been meeting with um some folks in like different African countries because I kind of like notice that uh, Chaos Africa is more of like um, a large uh, percentage of their members for Chaos Africa are Nigerians. So I have been trying to like connect and reach out with um, other um, African countries and Justin helped me connect with some folks in Cameroon. So um, I've been joining communities and trying to reach out to more uh, more folks in other countries as well. I know uh, Sele from the DI audit group also talked about some other folks, which um, I'm going to connect with later on. So I've been doing a lot of things, but <laughs> the rapids has been going well. And we are in the onboarding and learning phase. Um, so, yeah. <coughs> uh amazing that's so thank you for that ruth i mean that work is is amazing um as and i'll keep putting this out there right if there are things that yeah right exactly i agree with elizabeth such great work um ruth if there are things that you know you feel like you need as part of doing your work don't hesitate to let us know you know what i mean sure Right, that's amazing. Um, I'm I'm actually really excited about the the Twitter Spaces and um, really talking about about that work. Um, do you know who the speakers are? I'm kind of curious. Yeah. Um, so one is so the, the two founders of um, Open Source Community Africa, um, Samson Gadi and uh, Ada. Um, she she's also the founder of Chaos Africa. Um, I said Chaos Africa. Um, she called Africa. Um, okay. And I'm also going to connect with some other folks in other African countries. I have two confirmed, but I'm still making those connections so I get as much people, as much representation as possible. Okay. We need to really promote this, I think. Yeah, and to be recorded, so I'm, I'm, you can record Twitter spaces. <coughs> Uh, okay. So I'm going to record, but I think there's a limit of 30 days. It stays for like 30 days. So I, I'll find a way to take the recording to another platform. I think there's a way to do that. So we can have it maybe somewhere on the Chaos YouTube or something. We should be able to do what, what we do is we download the 
MP4 files, I think they are. Okay. And just upload them to, we upload them to YouTube. And yeah. I think we can give, if you want them to be part of a separate Chaos Africa channel, you could create a separate channel. Or if you wanted them to be tagged in the general Chaos channel, I think we just have to give your Google account permission to do those uploads. Yeah, I think I do have the Google account permissions. I have the Google account <laughs> logged in, so maybe that. Is, is it the same Google account, Elizabeth, as the video? Is the video and the chaos project at Gmail, is that all the same? I, I don't know. That's a great question. I I'm, I'm not sure. I think because I, I just, my personal one is added as an admin. And I think Georg yeah. maybe was on there. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's, my right. That's what I was wondering as well. So, yeah, I think, I think like Elizabeth or any other admin could add your Gmail to the YouTube permissions. Okay. That works. And I think Omar, Omar said we could use um, Chaos Cast, go also upload it to Chaos Cast as well. For sure. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep you all updated when we have everything in place and. Yeah. Please. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay, cool. Uh, well, look at that. We're at the end of time. It's 10 to the hour. You're all amazing. Um, thank you for, for people for taking on action items from this meeting and doing prior work and doing amazing work in Africa. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's really incredible. So thank you everybody for all of that. Um, Elizabeth, welcome back. It's good to see you. <laughs> You've been missed. Great to see you, Elizabeth. Yes. You've been missed it's good for to be sure. Back. I missed all your faces so much. I, <laughs> I got I got one of the three newsletters that I was responsible for getting out while you were gone published. So, you know, in the major league baseball world, that's pretty good average. <laughs> no worries at all. <laughs> all right, everybody. Until next time. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Enoch. Thank you.